Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, Amateur Radio Call Sign KE0OG, and welcome to this edition of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about what I've been calling the San Diego Hotspot. It's actually made by NextGen, and this is it right here. And uh, I've got it completely portable with this little uh, battery pack for it here. Uh, this is a 5 volt thing I got at a YouTube conference. And this is the hotspot. Notice it's got my call sign engraved in there. Uh, and we'll do an unboxing here in just a minute. But I want to talk a little bit about the hotspot. A hotspot is a way that people can use their DMR radios to connect to any talk group they want from wherever they are, including mobile in your car, because uh, this thing's got wireless and it'll connect to the hotspot in your phone. Um, and you can get into the DMR network, get into D-Star, you can get into C4FM and P25. Uh, so you've got four different uh, basic modes that you can play with there. Um, and this DMR is becoming very, very popular in the Chinese radios. This is the D878UV Plus from uh, Bridgecom Systems and very, very nice radio at about half the price of a comparable Japanese radio. The Chinese are going into DMR because the Japanese are either D-Star or C4FM. And uh, so it's easy for the Chinese to do that. And what's happening now, because of the popularity of the radios, the popularity of DMR has just skyrocketed. Now, the original open spot that excited a lot of attention is this little thing here, the Shark RF open spot. But it has been very, very much overtaken by Raspberry Pi based hotspots. And that is what this is right here. It's a Raspberry Pi computer, Raspberry Pi 3, with a little uh, daughter board on top that's the so-called modem. It's got the RF in it and the, uh, some DMR logic and so on. The rest of it's done right in the Raspberry Pi itself. Now, one of the nice things about that is that this um, will connect to your Wi-Fi network at home and it's designed to be plug and play. Now, the way it's designed to be plug and play is that you have to fill out a questionnaire um, before you, uh, you get your radio or get your hotspot. Um, you order the thing from NextGen, which is hamradio1.com. Hamradio1.com. Now, hamradio.com is ham radio outlet. So, hamradio1.com is NextGen down in San Diego. They have you fill out a form that has like your DMR ID, it has uh, what simplex frequency you want it on, uh, the color code setting, the time slot, which has to be two, by the way, with this, uh, with the Pi Star. The, the basic thing here is called a Pi Star. And the modem is called an MMDVM. And if you look on the Brandmeister webpage at the number of hotspots and so on, the open spot has really faded away now. And it's the MMDVM that is the real common one. And you can get these as little kits you can put together and so on. But what NextGen offers is true plug and play. And to test that out, what I did here was I took this thing did not change a thing on it other than plug it in and made it work. So let's look at that. First we'll look at the unboxing and then we'll look at some testing. I'm just going to do a parrot uh, on the thing. And uh, again, I have touched no settings on this. Okay. Now I did go in later uh, from the computer interface. You can log into it from your computer as long as it's on the same Wi-Fi network that uh, this thing is on. And I changed the latitude and longitude. They had me somewhere over in, um, I think the English Channel. It was uh, 50 degrees north and zero degrees uh, west, uh, which is, uh, <laughs> I think, about in the English Channel. Um, and I did change that. Now, I was a little surprised that that was not one of the queries on the uh, query form here because that is something that you can fill in about the radio. But I did change that 
after I demonstrated that it was completely uh, plug and play without making any changes to it. Um, so let's go look at that. We're going to do the unboxing and then we're going to do the test and we'll be right back. This is the box that comes in from San Diego. Uh, and looking inside, the first thing of interest is this card. Um, it's a thank you card uh, signed uh, by Bobby, KM6 IKH, saying thank you for your business. There's a couple, a couple business cards in there. That's a nice little touch. Uh, then there is some paperwork and uh, there's a checklist here of uh, all the different uh, quality tests and so on that it uh, passed. There's also uh, an instruction sheet of things to review very carefully, mostly about backing up and things like that. Uh, it notes that the initial boot up sequence may take a little bit longer. Um, and a few things like that. And then it um, has a page of uh, settings that you sent to it. After you order, you get this questionnaire and you put on here the information you want pre-programmed into the computer along with the uh, uh, Wi-Fi and everything like that is all in there. Now looking in the box, <laughs> An interesting touch. This is the uh, box the Raspberry Pi came in. It's uh, got a uh, little one foot power cable for it, uh, five volt powering. Uh, in here is a, a little longer cable with a, a built in power switch. And in here are a couple of antennas. This is the um, Wi-Fi, or not, sorry, the UHF antenna that uh, goes on the hotspot. You don't need to put that on the hotspot because the hotspot has a, a built-in little, a sort of a patch-like uh, style antenna. This is what they call a faux diamond antenna. I don't know why they call it faux um, that they have got. Um, and then there's a a few more business cards in there. I guess they figure they'll get most of their business by word of mouth. And then here is the piece de resistance, the the actual um, hotspot. Now this hotspot is a little larger than my open spot hotspot, which is the old Model One, not made anymore. Um, this is the hotspot. They they call it the Woody. And you can see why it's got just absolutely beautiful uh, wood inserts. That's actual wood, uh, hardwood that has been polished and put in there. What you're looking at here is a Raspberry Pi 3, okay, with all of its things. And then a little um, daughter board that's right up here, and that's the modem. Now, they call it the next gen, but this is the Pi Star, except it's all built, tested, and set up. The big advantage that they offer is that this thing is plug and play. So we're going to do some testing here to see if this is really plug and play uh, and see if we can get on uh, DMR. I don't have IDs for C4FM or for the ICOM and Kenwood system. Okay, so we've got a full-blown thing. Now we do are in theory, all we have to do is connect the power, which connects right down there. And there is a place down here where the little memory card goes in. He has thoughtfully included a uh, adapter here to go into your PC so you can take that card out, put it in here and back it up and, and do anything that you need to it. Uh, he talks about how there is designed in here several ways for the air to flow so that it doesn't get overly hot. And so we're going to try this to see if it is plug and play. 
Okay, we've got the thing set up now. It's operating on this little um, battery, 5 volt thing that I got at a YouTube conference. And so that's just it right there, just sitting right there. Yeah, I have not changed anything in here, nothing. <clears throat> I had to experiment a little bit with my radio. I was picking talk groups that there just weren't any people on. I understand some things have happened on talk groups uh, 310, and I don't know if they've been shut down or what, but I certainly wasn't getting anything. So I just put it on Parrot. So um, this is the next gen hotspot on Parrot. I'm in my western Colorado zone right there, and it's on time slot 2. So, and I managed to mess up the time on the thing there. Let's give it a shot here and see what happens. This is KE0OG. KE0OG on Parrot. On Parrot. And it takes a little while for the thing to come back around. Let's see what happens here. This is KE0OG. KE0OG on Parrot. On Parrot. Okay, so it works fine, and it truly is plug and play. A couple of the things that I learned, uh, when you use this thing, you have to, of course, set up a channel on your DMR radio uh, for whatever frequency you chose. I chose 446.2, and they set it up for that. Uh, it has to be time slot 2, and that's interesting because my software for my Anytone defaults to time slot 1, so I have to remember to change it to time slot 2. And then you pick your uh, talk group that you want. You have a different channel for each talk group that you like. And uh, then you can uh, listen to them here. You listen to whatever talk group is, is on that particular one. So it works right out of the box. No, zero modifications of this. It was truly plug and play. All right. We've looked at it and it works. It is truly plug and play. You just plug it in, and here I've got plugged into a little battery. You can plug it into like a, an adapter in your car um, power outlet and uh, anything that you want. And you get the thing up here. That thing that's scrolling across the screen just scrolls unless uh, the radio is active, in which case it tells you what it's doing. Um, you can uh, log into the thing from your computer by going to http colon slash slash pi dash star slash admin. Note there's no dot com or anything like that. Just write straight into admin. If you're on a Mac, it'd be pi, dot, pi dash star dot local. And it will take you right into it and you can see all the uh, different things about it. Another thing that you should do if you do not already have an ID at Brandmeister, go to brandmeister.network. Brandmeister.network. The network is the extension. There's no com on it or anything like that. And make sure everything that you've got there is up to date. It will also give you a lot of information real time. And that's how I could see I was coming through on the thing okay. So um, you will probably want to set up a channel on your, uh, on your uh, radio that is set to the hotspot so that you can uh, get into it anytime you want by going to that channel. Um, I have other channels for repeaters and for each talk group that you want to go into, you should create a channel for that so that you can go right into that talk group. Uh, they've been doing some things with TAC 310. Apparently they've been issues with kerchunkers and whatnot. Heaven forbid anybody would kerchunk. Um, and so I just used the Parrot one to show that it works. Uh, a few of the things about it, just um, they say that the best thing about them is that they're designed to be portable and wireless. Well, yeah, so are a lot of others. Um, the best thing about this one is it's truly plug and play, which for someone who is fairly new to ham radio and wants to do work with D-Star, uh, this will give you the capability to do serious work with D-Star. Uh, your only programming techniques will have to go into the radio, 
where you pick, you set up a channel, you add the channel to your zone, um, and the channel needs to be set up for talk group two, color code one, if that's the color code you choose. And uh, remember, simplex frequency on this, the same frequency in is out, okay? And you can change that if you want to, but uh, that's the way it's set up uh, to do it. Okay, um, there are, Next Gen has a bunch of models. This one is the, the Woody, uh, and it is. It has some beautiful pieces of beautifully finished wood in it, uh, sort of like an old Woody station wagon from 75 years ago. Um, the, they have a good customer service. I've talked with the fellow who uh, runs the place. Um, you can, uh, they, they have a different variety of models. And remember, you can do DMR, you can do Fusion, and with the correct Brandmeister reflector, DMR can bridge to D-Star and vice versa, okay? So there's all kinds of flexibility with this thing. This is what we're seeing now in the digital world, um, digital voice on um, VHF and UHF. Uh, is that rather than manufacturers all going to DMR, we're finding bridges being built between them so that you can get from one to the other and use whatever radio that you have. Um, it uses uh, the full-size Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, this is all solid uh, acrylic that has been expertly and beautifully machined. Uh, there's uh, all the ventilation holes in all the right spaces. You have the full functionality of a Raspberry Pi, um, although you, of course, don't need uh, all of the different things. It takes a little micro uh, USB, and then this other end here is just a regular USB for this little uh, battery pack. And it's got all the appropriate LEDs so that you know that it's on and different LEDs come on when you're transmitting and so on. Um, it, you do not have to use the little antennas that come with it. You can if you want. Uh, if you want to be just a little bit further away from the hotspot, like somewhere out in the garage, uh, you might want to do that, but uh, you don't. There's a built-in antenna here that you can use. And so I did it without that and it worked just fine. Um, you get this little uh, 12 inch cord. Uh, there's also a three foot cord um, that came with mine. And this actually has an on off in here. The only thing is um, Raspberry Pis like to be shut down just like PCs. They don't like the, the power just being yanked. Uh, there is a way through the computer logging into this thing that you can cause it to go through full shutdown. That's what I'm going to do, but you won't be doing that in a mobile environment. You'll just be pulling the power out. So um, I'm, if people have experience with that, they can let me know in the comments so everybody else can uh, see it there. The um, micro SD card is a USA name brand. Um, not sure what that means because um, they're all made overseas. Um, there is um, stainless steel hardware in the package with Allen head bolts, brass connector nuts, and so on. And uh, it's got a very nice sharp uh, display on the thing so you can, you can read lots of information about uh, what's going on there. This thing doesn't have a display at all. Uh, this has a nice display. Clearly, <clears throat> this is going out of service. This is going into service here uh, for now. So what would I say about this? Okay, the price is a little expensive for um, because you can get kits that are less. You just get a Raspberry Pi, get the kit, configure all the software, make it all work, set it all up properly, and so on. For a lot of people, a lot of new hams especially, that's actually overwhelming. And so it's better to just spend um, about as much money as you spend on this, spend that on this hotspot, it's that thing in the $250 price range from next gen, and get something that's plug and play. You know, frustration has a dollar value associated with it because you're going to put a lot of time into it. You can make the assumption that this works and then 
Um, what I had to do was, uh, you know, I had to take several passes at programming this so that I got everything right and done. Now that that has happened, it's done. I don't have to do that again. So do I recommend this device? Yes, with the understanding that it's plug and play. That's your biggest advantage to this. Plug and play. He'll take the information from you, put it all in the right places, send him your Latin long too, so he can put those in there. So Brandmeister doesn't show you in the English channel. And um, it would be a great addition, permanent addition to your ham shack. Uh, if you have other radios that are D-Star or C4FM, they will work with this also, okay? And you can set it up, in fact, so you have three radios, a DMR radio, a D-Star radio, and a C4FM radio, all right next to each other on the same frequency. And this thing, whatever comes in on that, will show RF on all three radios, but only one of them will talk, the one that has the right uh, digital connection on it. So you've got lots of different ways that you can set this thing up. I'm pretty enthused about it, as you can tell. I'm absolutely blown away by the quality of the craftsmanship. And uh, with a little portable like this, and then using that with your cell phone hotspot, you're on the air with DMR or D-Star or C4FM or P25 from anywhere. Good, good product. I'd like you to take a look, if you would, please. Make sure you are subscribing. If you are not subscribing, please do so. It's very important to me, it's very important to the channel that YouTube get your vote of confidence that this is a good channel. Please also click like and share. And also there is a tip jar at uh, ke0og.net slash tip hyphen jar or you can go to decastler.com slash support and look at all different things that you can do to uh, provide uh, some uh, support for this channel. Um, I am not a charity. I pay taxes just like everybody else and I will be doing that again this year and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have uh, voted to support my channel, whether by subscribing. If you subscribe, you're automatically an Augie, an OG, Augie. Uh, so become an Augie, subscribe. That's the most important thing that you can do. And uh, also, please feel free to leave comments. Um, I will leave a comment up even if I disagree with it, as long as it sticks to the facts, okay? Any ad hominem attacks or anything along the line of any ham ought to know this, you know, those get deleted. So um, don't even bother. <laughs> they won't stay up. I see them all. So thank you all very much and hope you're having happy holidays this holiday season as we approach Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, the new year. We just had Thanksgiving in the U.S. and I uh, uh, hope you enjoy it. Until next time, 73.